Baraka. <laughs> That, that was my favorite line in the entire movie. Hey guys, Shalana here. Welcome to The Bin Zone. On today's video, we're talking about the movie Antebellum from the producers of Get Out and Us. The movie's leading the charge on the black horror renaissance. We have Antebellum. When it comes to Antebellum, the trailers that dropped last year, everyone's anticipation was high. I was hyped. Janelle Monet, the producers of those two movies that I just talked about, everything is going good. The trailer dropped, a horror trailer. I'm like, yo, I'm in heaven, bro. Like, this is gonna be great. And then the reviews started coming out. And they were bad. They were pretty bad. Then I went on YouTube and watched some reviews. They were pretty bad. But you know what? I'm Shalana. I'm gonna watch it and form my own opinion because it can't be bad because it's from the producers of Get Out and Us, the leaders of the black horror renaissance. But even with these two movies, I wonder there were pretty low expectations because I saw the Rotten Tomato score. And even with my low expectations, I was still disappointed. But before I dive too deep into this movie, I wanna talk about some of the things I liked about this movie because this whole movie is not all bad. There are things I like, for example, I love the cinematography, the camera work, the scenery, the set pieces. Oh my God, the cinematography was great. I also love the, uh... the cinematography. I don't know, man. This movie missed the mark. The mark is here and the movie ended up somewhere here. And it's like, I'm sitting here watching the movie trying to comprehend What's going on? Trying to put the pieces together. I'm seeing Easter eggs. I'm seeing references. The Jefferson Suite. The Robert E. Lee statue. So much different symbolisms. The butterfly on the book. And I'm trying to figure out what this movie is saying. I don't know, guys. I'm not the brightest toolbox in the shed. Because we know, so far, with this new black horror Hollywood trope going on, we have these horror movies starring black actors and telling black stories. We also have black TV shows like that, Watchmen. We also have Lovecraft Country. So it's a whole new renaissance of these things happening. And all these things are deconstructing the narratives and the racial undertones that Hollywood has had for years, as well as America. And then we have Antebellum. Instead of deconstructing all these narratives, Antebellum kind of reinforces them. And it's like, so we're reinforcing black trauma and monetizing it? That's what we're doing? No way, no way. So I, I press play. I'm pressing play. I'm watching this movie. And the movie starts off with a beautiful single camera pan, no cuts. And we're looking at the scenery. And I'm like, hold on. This is a plantation. And black people are picking cotton. They're slaves. Civil War soldiers are walking through the campus. And then they killed a black person in the very first five minutes of this movie. Granted, this movie is only an hour and a half. So in the first five minutes... We have a sweeping, beautiful shot of black terror and tragedy. Um, okay. This is from the producers of Get Out and Us. That has to be deeper meaning. So then we switch to Janelle Monae's character. No joy to do this. <laughs> and she's getting beaten to say her name. And this scene is oddly familiar. Son of a... Ah! Your name is Toby. Now tell me your name. Yes, to Roots. And she has to say her name, they break her down, and then we skip six weeks later. So the first 10 minutes of this movie is just black people getting abused. And then we skip to six weeks later. Huh? I am not going to let the first 15 minutes of a movie dictate how I feel about it. So I'm watching it. Because Janelle Monet, I respect her as an actress. I love her even more as a musician. And if these are the same people who brought us some of these black movies that we've been loving the past few years, I gotta give them a bit of a doubt. I mean, some, man, the suffering that happened in the end of this movie has to pay dividends. It's laying the groundwork for the future of this movie. Right? No. 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 The beginning scene has nothing to do with the remainder of the movie. The fact that they're removing her name and they're telling her her name is Eden plays no dividends throughout this movie at all. And then the fact that the whole opening sequence, it's like, 
Det var kostnad. Guys. Bro. I'm trying. So we fast forward six weeks later and there's a bunch of new slaves that come in and this little white girl is naming them and little white girls are creepy, but we're gonna get into that later in this video. They're naming them. This girl comes up to Janelle's character and telling her, I know who you are. You're from Virginia. You have to get us out of here. And Janelle's like, uh, we, we don't do that. So earlier in the movie, in the first 10 minutes, she was defiant and refused to say her new name, but now she's broken down and she's doing these things in her cabin where she's moving a certain way. And I'm like, okay, is she dancing? Is she grooving? Is she doing some, what's she doing? I know it plays out later on. I know what happens. It's her memorizing the steps of the cabin without making a sound so she can escape. But like, it's foreshadowing, but like bad foreshadowing because it's just there. Like usually foreshadowing is subtle. When you dedicate an entire scene and sequence to the movements, like, we have to know why. But we're seeing how life is on this farm and we're seeing how abusive the overseers are. And then we find out we're in a civil war camp and these Confederate soldiers think that, you know, this is their, their God-given right and they're gonna win America from the Union and this is where they belong. And we're introduced to two white guys, one of them super dorky and dweeby, and he sees one of the slave girls and he takes her back to his cabin. At this point, I'm thinking, this guy's kind of shy. She starts talking to him and my initial thought was, he looks innocent, but he's a white Confederate soldier, so you shouldn't be talking to him. And of course, I was right, because he beats her ass and destroys her. And I'm sitting here like, so instead of doing the thing that rhymes with vape, he actually beat her down. So like, I'm seeing more black violence. And then she was pregnant, so him kicking her while she was down causes her to have a miscarriage, and she kills herself. And Janelle Monet feels responsible partly because she didn't take action and then we skip to present time 2020 and Janelle Monet wakes up in bed she's married with a kid and I'm <laughs> what at this point I'm confused but I know this story is a mystery so I'm watching it and not long after the sequence happens we find out the twist of this movie is they're in modern times and this slave encampment is happening in 2020 these things could possibly still be happening to this day I understand trying to narrate that, but the movie does a terrible job because we're following Janelle Monet's character. She's a PhD in sociology and she's an activist against racial inequality. She has a PhD. She graduated from Spelman, Columbia. She met Obama. She has all the checklists of powerful black women, all the checklists that seems like Hollywood wants us to know. Like she's a powerful, strong black woman that we're gonna break down in this movie and we're gonna abuse for the majority of this movie. But you know, she got a PhD, and then we see this scene with her on the CNN, right? And she's saying, The disenfranchisement of black people in America is by design written into the actual DNA of this country. Your argument, however flawed, has been successfully promoted and propagated through repetition. We hear it over and over again. She didn't say anything. She, she didn't say anything. She, she, she said a bunch of fancy words without saying anything. What did she say? We are no longer perpetuating the notion of injustices done to our people. But as the movie progresses, right, we're seeing her in her hotel. She's in the Jefferson suite. And I understand why they would put her in the Jefferson suite because of Thomas Jefferson and the symbolism behind that. And her book, um, Coping With Something, is the title of the book. And she has a butterfly on the cover. And the butterfly coping mechanism is a coping mechanism people use and for children in order for them to get over certain traumas. And I see the correlation between racial injustice and trauma. So we have to cope with that in our existence. And this movie feels like propaganda. And I'm like, hold on, you're telling me I have to cope with abuse of black people and slavery. It's a thing that's happened. I have to understand that. We as the audience have to understand that because it happened and you're gonna show us gratuitous violence throughout the entire movie to drill that in our heads because apparently after years and decades of us watching slave movies we haven't got the message but hey it's from the producers of get out and us so black people are gonna watch it we're gonna show up in our nice shikis and support and we're gonna pay 20 dollars because i paid amazon 20 dollars to watch this movie and as janelle Monet's character is going back up to her suite she sees a little white girl in the elevator 
and she gets in the elevator with the little white girl. And I'm sitting here like, no! Like, did you guys watch the episode of Blackish? trouble and of course the white girl gets her kidnapped and she's taken back to this place and we find out the whole time that they're in modern setting and that's a twist think of the village the M. Night Shyamalan movie right I said Shyamalan <laughs> the M. Night Shyamalan movie and the whole twist was it's in modern time so this is the same twist but instead of it being a twist at the end it's a twist that happens in the middle of the movie so now we know the big mystery and now we're in for more violence because now she finds a way to escape she sneaks out the guy who she was escaping with ends up getting killed they fight the guy she ends up killing the white people in a way of triumphant justice and then she rides off into the sunset getting chased and gunned down and we're there she's like yeah riding her horse and she's getting shot at and like i'm sitting here watching her ride the horse right she's just riding i'm like hold on this scene is this scene is dope but is this she a sociologist how did she not ride this horse and use a rope and lasso people and do all the things she did? And she takes the white woman, she drags the white woman and kills her with the Robert E. Lee statue. And I'm like, the symbolism. Robert E. Lee's terror has ended because she killed this white Karen. I'm assuming that's the point in the movie where the audience should have clapped bravo, brava. This movie is so powerful. And again, I'm not saying that I don't see the symbolism behind this movie. I'm not saying I don't see all the subtle things. The butterfly, Robert E. Lee, the fact that they're obsessed with her, the fact that she's a powerful black woman. All these things are not lost on me at all. But at the same time, it's like, I just see black people suffering. I did love the cinematography. Black people are suffering beautifully. That is this movie. The movie ends with the FBI coming in and destroying the compound and everything is right with the world and i'm saying like hold on i just watched the movie with black people suffering in modern day and it's a bunch of loser nerds larping and yes larping live action role playing of the civil war and reenacting what would happen if the civil war was still happening so so we're suffering at the hands of just everybody at this point right like systemic racism check Hollywood check and now losers who play Dungeons and Dragons in their basement I watched Lovecraft Country right before I watched this thing and that show is so much better than this movie I saw us I saw get out I saw Watchmen the show and I'm like we have a renaissance of black Hollywood movies deconstructing the horror genre and reconstructing a different narrative around black people movies and horror and then we have antebellum riding the wave but i have to say overall this movie antebellum to me was exploiting black trauma to the fullest while get granted it gave us symbolisms those symbolism ultimately ran hollow because of the very nature of what it was portraying and how this problematic troublesome and just discombobulated and bad that this movie was but anyway guys that's my thoughts on it i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below if you like this video give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and until next time binge on <laughs>